Welcome back. We are going to continue our video series with Master Cam in this third video. In this video, we have already have our tic-tac-toe file, the STP step file loaded, and we are now going to begin doing our machining. We're going to actually do facing in this first program. However, I do want to take a moment and talk about the different types of tool paths we're going to be doing as well in future videos. I've got a great video that actually goes through tooling uh, with the uh, machining center, the CNC, later. But I do want to touch on each tool as we go so you kind of see what's happening as we go through this. So for facing operations under tool paths here, we have contour, drill, dynamic, milling, facing, pocketing, uh, all kinds of different things. We're going to be in contour and facing quite a bit for what we do, a little bit of drilling uh, as we go through these different operations. Um, so what is facing? If we look at this part here, this is uh, the finished for the first set of operations. This is the raw material. So if we look at these two objects, right, they're different heights in there. So we're actually going to be taking material off of here to get to this nice clean surface on this part. Uh, that facing operation uses a uh, shell mill or facing mill. We have a four carbide insert mill bit here that we're going to be using special for this. This is a two inch diameter that we're going to use roughly and you're going to come across and with this spinning take material, come over, take material, come over and you're going to do that a couple of times as we come across this part. You can't take all that off in one pass or shouldn't and we always want to have a finishing pass so we have a really nice clean surface when we're done. So we're going to do at least two passes with that face mill. Other operations that we're going to be doing potentially in the future is contouring and drilling. Uh, just to show a couple other bits here, this is a standard end mill. This is a four flute, three quarter inch carbide end mill. And this would be for, say, coming around the outside and contouring that material away, which we'll do. And then we've also got drill bits and ball end mills. This here is a drill bit. This would be, you know, theoretically you come in here or come into the big holes on the finished part to drill those holes. There's all kinds of different tooling, millions of tool options that you can use on the CNC's, but you have to set those up to run them in Mastercam or in your CAM software for it to actually work. All right, so we're gonna be facing this uh, material. We're gonna go to a top view. We always wanna make sure we are mostly in the top view when we choose our geometry, uh, otherwise the Mastercam defaults to the closest view, the front view, the right side view, the top view, and the machine out in the shop is always in the top view. So if it accidentally converts your program to a right side view, you don't have a horizontal spindle, it's not going to work. So we always want to be mostly in a top view. If you can't quite get the geometry you want, you can always go to view and click this rotate button, seeing as I haven't figured out in Itopia how to do just a quick right click rotate um, a little bit. So we got to click the rotate and we pick any axis. So like the Y axis, 10 degrees, and we've rotated just a little bit. We can see underneath of the top view if we need to. Um, doesn't really matter if we do that on this particular one, but I always like um, just rotating a little bit personally when I grab my, my surfaces. So I'm going to go tool paths, face, now in here we have 2D options or 3D options. Make sure you're choosing the correct one for what you're trying to grab, a 3D model feature or 2D sketch um, features like these lines here. You have to be in the correct 2D, 3D. So we wanna grab the full object here. So then we're also gonna make sure that we have loop right here checked and that's gonna grab this whole um, square all the way around or any square honestly it's gonna grab the whole square whereas if we just have edges you're just grabbing one edge at a time you have to go around and click all four edges and that's a common mistake that people don't grab a, a true shape per se so we want to be on loop and uh, we'll come in here and grab that face as the overall object no it's not at the top that's okay we'll tell it depths later technically depths don't matter until you um, get into linking properties in your tooling. We can lie and change all of our depths if we need to. All right, we're gonna check that as our geometry. It grabbed a yellow box all the way around. That's great, it's what we want. And 
check mark. All right, so here's the confusing stuff. First off, I had mentioned we want to make sure that it grabs the top view. So you want to do a quick check over here on the facing operation that this is top and top. It does. We grabbed our geometry the right way. If it doesn't, you might waste the next 10 minutes of choosing all your settings and find out you did it wrong. It's going to take me a while to get through these settings. It doesn't take this long to actually do it once you know what you're doing. But for me to explain it, this is going to take a little bit. All right, we already did facing, so we're done there. We're going to go into uh, tooling and go select the tool that we want to machine with. We said it was a two inch face mill. So we're going to go to select library tool. There's a whole bunch of tools set up in Mastercam for us. We're going to go to filter and it might have everything selected. You see this huge list of stuff or maybe it's got nothing selected and you see nothing in there. As you notice, I'm going to the filter button and I'm choosing the type of bit that I want to go through here. So I'm going to choose face mills and OK. And now here's the different face mills created uh, as default. I can make a tool if I need to, but why? There's already a two inch face mill here. I choose that. It comes in as a two inch face mill. That's great. I have some settings I can play with. The first thing you need to do is tell it what tool you have in the 10 tool tool changer in the CNC. And that's important. Um, we will talk about that when we're setting up our tools, but you got to know where you're putting it. You can change this later, but you got to change it before you export your code. So I believe the two inch face mill is in tool nine. So all three of these need to say nine. Next is going to be creating your feed rates and spindle speed values for how fast you're going to move and how fast the RPM of the spindle goes. And that's going to be a formula that we're going to be using. So for this formula, the spindle speed is RPM is equal to cutting speed times four divided by the diameter of the end mill. So cutting speed for aluminum is a nominal value that we're going to use of 400. And the diameter of the face mill is two inches. So if we take uh, 400 for cutting speed, multiply that by four, we get to 1600. Divide that by the diameter of the face mill, which is two inches, you get 800 RPM. 800. All right, that's great. Next one is going to be our feed rate. Uh, which is how fast it's going to move on the table. So this is how fast it spins. This is going to be how fast it moves. Uh, that formula, we're going to likely need a calculator because we're dealing with a couple of smaller numbers. That's going to be the RPM times the number of teeth times how thick we want our chip to be. So the number of teeth on the two inch face mill here you got to know what bit you're using is four there's four inserts there all right so and we already know our rpm is 800 so if we take 800 times four and then we got to multiply that number by the chip load which is how thick the piece of chip is going to be like if you got sawdust in the woods lab how thick is that wood chip how thick is our metal chip here we're going to play with three thousandths to be safe right now so 0 0.003 times 0 0.003 and we end up with a feed rate of 9.6. I'm just going to round up to 10. Generally speaking, our plunge rate is half of our feed rate a lot of times. This part is not going to plunge into the part, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, the rest of the stuff is kind of uh, standard for what it's going to do. So we did some, some specifics here. We set up our tool number. To what tool slot it is in the mill. If you don't know, ask your teacher or check the chart. Uh, you have to calculate your feed rate in RPM. There's formulas for that in the classroom. You got to do a little bit of math with a calculator to find the spindle speed and feed rate. And then uh, we're ready to move on to the next step. We don't have to do anything with holder, so we're going to move on to cut parameters. On this one here, it asks, do you want to leave material on the walls or the floors? For this particular option, no. We want to come right to our final height, so zero. And then up here we can change how much uh, before and after the part we're going to go and how much overlap step over we're going to have. Uh, step over is like when you're mowing your lawn. If you're pushing a lawnmower and mowing your grass at the front or backyard of your house or you've seen somebody else do it, 
Uh, typically, you're trying to get as much of that mower on new grass so you don't have to sit there forever mowing your lawn. You're trying to cut 100% of that lawn mower on new grass all the time. So that'd be 100% step over where that blade is touching new grass the entire blade. But let's say you got a really thick lawn and you can't mow the entire mower because it's going to bog down. So you got to cut half of the mower width as you go. That'd be a 50% step over or half of the blade. Well, this is a two inch end mill. So if we go 50%, one inch of that end mill is cutting in new material. I like to try to stick to about 50% for most of what we do, unless you're on really small end mills. So we're gonna leave this value here at 50% for what we're doing. Most of this other stuff is fine for what we're dealing with right now. Um, if you ever start playing with these numbers, I would play with one at a time and see what it does. Okay, we're coming into depth cuts next. We do want to turn that on. You'll notice right now it looks like it's off, but if we hit the checkbox, it's now on. I mentioned on the part here, we want to take at least two passes. So we're gonna come in with the face mill and take one pass, and then we're gonna do it again, and we're gonna take a nice clean finishing pass. I don't want you to normally take more than 100 thousandths in a pass, uh, more than 0.1 in a pass. So maximum roughing step here, 0.1. And you can go smaller than that. And then finish passes, we're gonna say one finish pass. And the value I like to use for our finishing passes is eight thousandths of an inch, 0 .008. So it'll take roughing passes all the way down to just about the finished surface. And then it'll take one clean pass at eight thou. And Mastercam does the math for you. It'll know how many passes to do to get to that value for you. I also like to check this keep tool down, just saves a little bit of time if you were running production. Don't necessarily need that uh, for what we're doing, but it's a nice little checkbox. Moving on, linking parameters. First thing, and I don't know why it doesn't default to this, but we're going to check everything absolute right off the bat. Absolute, 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 so that we are taken care of. Um, next thing here, I like to start with top of stock, and then I go uh, this direction and that direction with my other values, and I'll talk about that. But top of stock is where is the material? So again, I'm coming back to the CAD file shows this, but this is what's loaded in the CNC. So technically right now, top of stock in the CNC is up here in space. It's this surface. It's not this surface right there. So we have to figure out what that surface is for top of stock. So looking at this, if we say zero, uh, zero should work if I come to a front view. Zero is this line up here. So if I tell it zero, it should be above the part where that other material is. So we're gonna go ahead and do that because we moved the part down, zero is the top of our material. How do I get back to that right here? All right, good. So top of stock um, is that zero. So now these numbers, the feed plane and retract should be above our top of stock and our depth cuts should be below the top of stock. Now that we've set them again, all are absolute. Our top of stock right now is zero. So our feed plane and our retract should be higher than that, which they are. If they weren't, I'd have to adjust them. That, that basically means that it's gonna rapid the bit above the part until it starts cutting and then it'll start going slow below the part. All right, how deep are we cutting? We're gonna go depth and just click it and click the top of the part. As long as I have a point somewhere on the top of the part here, it'll find it. So I'm gonna grab there and it says, okay, we're going negative 100 thou, which makes sense. We move the part down 0.1. So we are all set up on this screen. This screen tends to be a little confusing because you're trying to tell it where to machine. So do take some time or ask extra questions. Last thing we're gonna mess with when we're facing, we don't really do anything else in here other than coolant. And honestly, we don't need to turn coolant on for the plastic, so we're gonna leave this to off. But if we were cutting aluminum, we would probably turn this on. So we're gonna leave coolant off for right now, but that's usually the only other thing we would do typically for here. We hit the checkbox for okay. And you see it starts to create some paths for what we're machining. We have a green check mark, so that's great. Nothing went wrong. With the operation we still have top top with everything there i can go to a front view and look at this and if i zoom in i should see two passes here's my roughing pass 
and here's my finishing pass right on the surface. If your finishing pass isn't right on the surface, you probably messed up. Let's go back into parameters and to cut parameters, you probably left a value right there. It's not zero. It's trying to stay above the part. So that's a common mistake um, for what we're doing. I want to show real quick how to go back and change a value. You usually like to change one thing at a time. So if I go to parameters, let's say, and I change my step over to 75%. Right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like six passes. So if I go to 75%, it updates to four passes. Obviously it's going to take way less time, but it's taking more material off too. So through uh, experience, you start to understand what the machine is capable of handling as you get better at what you're doing. But changing one thing at a time in Mastercam makes it a lot easier to see what the changes were. We're going to hit save again so that we continue saving our work as we go. And we want to simulate this. There's two different ways to simulate. We can watch it in 2D and in 3D. I like to do the green check, green check mark here. And then here's 2D. So we're going to go to 2D. And I like to see this in a front view. I'm looking at my depths, trying to see what it's going to do. So if I hit uh, play right over here, not the check mark yet, the play. If you don't see it moving, maybe the mill bit is not turned on. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm just watching my Z directions. Because if it's going to crash, it's usually in the Z direction that something goes wrong. So I'm watching those tool paths. Everything looks right in the Z. You can do Alt S to go from wireframe to 3D model. Again, that was Alt S, especially if you're going into pockets. Okay, that looks good. We're going to check mark. Now we're going to go to this button here for verify, which is our 3D simulate. This is the pretty one. Everybody likes to see this version. But the 2D wireframe version really shows us what that tooling is doing. Okay. Isometric, right click, change the view a little bit and hit play. And because we set up our stock, it took material away. That's why we set that stock up early on uh, because you can actually see it do the work. A lot of people go, well, I really want to see what it does better. So slow it down a little bit, slow it down, maybe turn the precision up, play. It takes a little bit longer, but we see better detail on what we're doing there was two passes now you actually saw it make two passes for depth because we slowed it down enough to look at that if we make it even slower it's going to take quite a while <clears throat> it is working right now just uh, maybe too slow Let's speed it up just a little bit So it's only cutting in one direction right now. It lifts and comes over to the other side and cuts again. You can change it to cut both directions in the, in the parameters. You can change a lot of different things. All right, so that's it for this uh, video here for facing in this particular setup. Uh, we have saved our file. We've done our facing. In the next video, we are going to do the contour path to go around the outside edge and actually get this thing to start looking like the profile shape that it is. Uh, with that, hopefully this has been helpful and you can keep progressing forward.